everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to a totally awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Are you so excited? I am completely excited, and we have Maggie Wheeler on the show with us today. And man, you guys are going to enjoy her so much. She's so sweet and so very talented and has some really great stories for you. She does. Let's go there now. Our guest takes being multi-talented to a whole new level. She is an actor, singer, songwriter, and director of the Golden Bridge Choir here in Los Angeles. She is known for her hilarious work on sitcoms like Friends, Everybody Loves Raymond, Seinfeld, Ellen, it goes on and on and on, and she is also known for her animated work in Silverhawks and Archer. She is simply fabulous, and we are so excited to get buzzed with the magnificent Maggie Wheeler. Get down, Maggie Wheeler. <laughs> Thank you. You are a busy girl, huh? I try to Put it there, busy. man. Yeah! Straight from the set. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. If you guys only knew what we had to go through. (laughs) Okay, all the red tape. Oh my gosh, no. To get her here today, you'd freak out. I object, Chuck Duran. You were the loveliest, most easiest person to coordinate with, and you're so busy, so thank you for you having a very busy day. And thank thank you you for, tell the truth. It's very good to be here. (laughs) But we did, we had to reschedule a couple of times, but but you guys were fantastic. Oh, thank thank you you so much. And we say until I get a restraining order, or you're there, then we just keep going. It's a very good method. (laughs) And it works. Um, So I want to break the ice here by letting everybody know exactly how the three of us met, because it's actually a very funny story, and I think, Maggie, take it away. It is a funny story. (laughs) Okay, so uh, let's see. I was getting ready to go to an event, and I was also preparing on the next day to do um, to do another event with the wonderful Cedaring Fox, who I know you've had yes. on this show yes. many times. She's extraordinarily talented, and she runs something called Word Theater, which I'm sure she's yes. spoken about. Yep. So she was coordinating an event, and I was participating in it. And we'd had some kind of a conversation, and she was talking to me about her boyfriend, and then we hung up the phone or whatever happened. I thought, God, what did she say his name was? So I thought, okay, well, in this day and age, what do you do? You just Google. And so I said, oh, well, I'll Google Cedaring Fox's boyfriend or Cedaring Fox <laughs> and boyfriend or something like that. That's anyway. what I would Google. <laughs> and then I, and then I, of course, it's not going to come up as a heading. So I went to images because I thought, oh, I'll find a picture of Cedaring right. Fox and boyfriend. And instead, I found a trillion pictures of Cedaring Fox and you. And, <laughs> and I and I did not know who you were. I had never seen you before. I, yeah. I thought I had seen you before. And I thought, who's that guy? Who's that guy? I knew you were not her boyfriend. Yeah only because maybe there was a descriptive she had shared or something like that. But anyway, I knew that's not who you were, but I had no idea who you were. I also did not have time to Google you and find (laughs) out exactly who you were. Just was mysterious. And so then I got myself together and I left the house and I went to this event in the evening, walked in the room, got something to eat, (laughs) went into the deeper into the living room, the door opened, I turned (laughs) around and there you were. And I thought, that's the craziest that's ever Th- that happened because really I and, and I then you never walked up to us and you said, "Oh my gosh, I've been stalking you all day on the internet." Right. I, said, I, internet. I have no and I'm idea. Like, what? what? <laughs> so she told us a story, yeah. and I was like laughing because so how weird crazy. is that? It was weird. That was really. It was weird. Really I'm weird. like, I, I just wanted. I, I came up to you and I said, "Look." There's no real <laughs> normal way to explain this to you. I would have no idea who you were, except that I've been staring at your picture for the last hour. And yeah, I'm so yeah. glad that it happened. That I know. Way. Us too. Yeah. I know. It was very fun. And then Absolutely. We, we and then we interview. sat down next to each other mm-hmm. during this whole event. <laughs> yes, um, it was. It was. It was kismet. We had. We had a good times. We, we had did. some good it times. Was fun. Yeah. Um, anyways, so check this out. Um, let's get down to some business here. Let's do it. All right, some fun business. I'm ready. Um, we know, okay, so many people know you from all, from your awesome TV and film work, of course. Uh, Stacy just uh, talked about that, and Thank we're you. definitely going to get into a that. small fraction. Absolutely. Uh, but how did you get started in voiceover? Well, I grew up in New York City, and I was, you know, uh, uh, pounding the pavement and trying to get work as an actress. I was pretty young. I was in high school, and, and uh, I had a manager. So at the time, I think I thought the sort of pinnacle of success would have been to, you know, be flipping a burger on a Burger King commercial. But I would go on all these ridiculous commercial auditions. And they would say, like, what are you? You're very ethnic. Are you Puerto Rican? Are you Italian? Are you Jewish? What are you? What are you? So I thought, well, this is never going to happen. And I think that my, my manager started to feel a little sorry for me. So she booked me on a voiceover gig where I was just going to stand in a crowd at, uh, at Clack Studios in New York, just stand in a crowd full of young kids. It was a it was a promo for a band, the Rubenus, and I just had to stand there like a good little girl and say, "Ooh, the Rubenus! Ooh, the Rubenus! Ooh, the Rubenus!" And then they said, you know, clack clack, who's the kid with the low voice? I thought, oh my god, they're gonna. Anyway, they pulled me out and they gave me the 
they gave me the spot. Wow. Nice. So that was my first voiceover job. And then they just kept bringing me back and bringing me back. I did a ton of stuff for them. And then I did a ton of stuff for CBS Records and MTV. And those were my first voiceover gigs. And I loved it. And that's it. when you were like a kid, right? Or I younger. was a teenager. A teenager. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's uh, so cool. Sort of cool. end of my high school years. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, time passed. I did a bunch of other, I did a bunch of voiceovers during that period of time in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I did my my first big TV gig was a show called The New Show that Lorne Michaels directed. It was his return to, he left Saturday Night Live and, mm -hmm. and he, he created a sketch comedy show for prime time. Mm -hmm ahead of its time. Uh, anyway, I had a chance to work with some incredible, incredible people. I mean, from Kevin Klein to Raul Julia and, mm. and Penny Marshall and, and, and Steve Martin, yeah. John Candy. I, it was unbelievable. Well, I, I bet, was man. young you and I was wow. just like, this like, is not yeah. happening. So it was pretty fabulous. Anyway, the show got canceled. I moved out to LA for a year and I got a call from this woman. I didn't know her, and she Cedaring Fox, mm -hmm. <laughs> Cedaring Fox, okay. but Lee Just Danaker, who checking. worked for Rankin Bass, mm -hmm. and um, and sh she had approached Lorne. He gave her my audition tape for the new show, and in order to get that job, I had to do six minutes of original stand-up. I had never done that before either, but mm -hmm. I but I did six kind of crazy character-driven pieces. So anyway, they looked at that. Rankin Bass asked me if I wanted to come back to New York to do a superhero cartoon. I was on the next plane to do Silverhawks, and that turned into, you know, it was the first yeah. order was 65 episodes, but wow. we kept going, kept going. And then Rankin Bass hired me to do a bunch of other things for them too, so I worked for them for a lot of years, and it was divine. So cool. That was my begin. Those were so, my humble, my humble beginnings. That is very humble. That is very nice. <laughs> this is very, very nice. Yeah, very nice. I have a little doll. They make up my character, and she's <laughs> in my closet. Do you have a different when you're preparing for an audition for on camera and voiceover? Mm -hmm. Do you have a different process, or how do you approach? Do you have any similarities how you approach them? You know. So one of the things that I, that's, that's interesting for me is that... You keep oh. talking. I'm just, oh. moving, I'm just Chuck moving is just going to... I'm just moving your voice. Yeah, that's we want to so hear nice. your voice, you so know? So thoughtful of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I, when I was sort of early on in my training, I had the chance to work with this incredible woman, Anna Devira Smith, who's a phenomenal actress and a phenomenal playwright and performer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she really focused on was the rhythm of language. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she does these incredible one-woman shows where she plays everybody and uh, when I was working with her when I was younger we did a we sort of we did our own version of that uh, and and she w and one of the things she focused on was this moment at which language um, accelerates so when a person's in the middle of a story you know the moment at which they shift gears and you can hear the song change mm -hmm. and you know because I guess I, 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 I hear life a little bit musically you do I mm -hmm. listen I hear my characters musically mm -hmm. and I think that crosses both the genres, whether it's voiceover or, or, yeah, or uh, sure. on camera, that I fi like to find the song of the character. Yeah, so she mm -hmm. literally finds the music in the script, yeah. which a lot of voiceover coaches talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, w th that's actually really cool. We actually both were yes. listening to a lot of your record, Oh, and so you nice. are yeah. a fabulous singer. Oh, it's amazing. Well, let, yeah, let's she go there. She sounds like an so, angel. Oh, oh okay. That's so nice. I want to I want to pick up my card because I want to get this card. quote direct. Okay, so Maggie has this CD called Sweet Time. It's on cdbaby.com. Mm -hmm. It is available on cdbaby.com. Run, don't walk. Get it right now. You can <laughs> you can open a new window and order it right now. Yeah. Um, you wrote all the songs. I did. You sang all the tracks. The harmonies are delicious. They are so layered. She does all the harmonies. Um, and I, you're, I read that your voice is described as a rich, earthy prayer from the heart. That's so nice. Isn't that beautiful? And it so is. I mean, I, I want to play it. Let's play a little bit. We're going to play a little clip okay, right here. So listen. Well, you can walk out in the darkness, and you can walk out in the rain, and if you listen through the thunder. You will hear something calling your name Sometimes you have to listen Sometimes it's almost gone But if you try, if you try you will hear it The voice is telling you to press on Press on, press on Wow. So the num so that's called press on what we press just heard. On. We just heard a little glimpse. Yeah. Um, how awesome is that? So when you went into the studio to record this, 
was it on a one by one or was all the stuff already formulated and written and you just went in and did like, you know, in a period of obviously weeks and months or whatever to record, but was it all written or was it uh, little by little? Let me think about how to answer that. I, I like to work on GarageBand a lot, uh -huh. so uh, so I had I had worked out what I was going in there to do. And then there was also sort of a, a margin for experimentation with a song. If, I, you know, if I'm recording something and I don't like it, then I'm going to fool around until I find yeah. something I do like. Um, but it wasn't written like... No, not, not yeah. notes. No, yeah. no notes but, on the page written. Right. But yes, written. And yes, uh, yeah, I had worked out pretty much what was happening. Although there is um, there's one cut on it, uh, which is called Anana. Anana. And, yeah, and I, I, the choir that I direct in Hollywood, I co-direct with a, a gentleman by the name of Emil Hassan Dyer, who's fantastically talented. And he's a, uh, he loves vocal improv. That's his thing. He's a vocal percussionist, vocal yeah. improv guy. And so we improvised that song. And then we, w then we went back in and kind mm -hmm. of... You know, sang over it. So wow. all that that one just it's, sort of happened. In it's the just it's haunting. It's inspiring. It, there's, it just yeah. takes you through so many different emotions and yeah. levels of oh, it's just thank you. Do so you, so nice beautiful. To hear. Do so you beautiful. remember? This is a technical question, but mm. do you remember how many tracks you laid down on? So we're talking a lot of the stuff is a cappella, so it's just all yeah, most harmonies of it, yeah. and beautiful. Most songs have at least five, and then some of them have eight or ten. Or, oh my you know, God! It I don't sounds know. like fifty or a hundred. <laughs> She's a one-woman choir. <laughs> I it's am crazy. It's like, no, I'll do it. You stay home. I got this. I got it. It's, my goodness. But what I think is so cool is that so many of your characters that you play on camera, obviously Janice, a lot of the different characters you have. What I loved is that your voice is unexpected. Mm -hmm. your singing voice because uh, you think oh automatically it's going to have a certain resonance or tone and it's just so rich oh, and just you. grounded and yeah. I I love that thank and you me. also did What a Pair you do a lot with What I a do, Pair I do I do that every year I'll be doing it again this year so that's a beautiful breast cancer benefit mm -hmm. that's done uh, every year uh, where women sing uh, Broadway duets together and I do it every year with Kathleen Wilhoyt who's fantastic wonderful actress incredible yes. musician also was the voice of Pepper Ann um, and uh, yeah, so we do it together every year. And uh, yeah, I do. I love to sing. I've been singing since I was That's a fabulous. kid. That's fabulous. And my, yeah. it's true, my singing voice does not resemble <laughs> the voice of many of the characters that I am well known for. Yeah. Which is, I love it because, I mean, it, well, it shows your versatility, obviously, and your talent, but yeah. just that you have such great vocal control. Thank you. Um, yeah. How do you take care of your voice? Uh, well, let's see. I um, well, we know we know she goes to Sweet Butter for tea. <laughs> I did do that. We know that. Non caffeinated I did do that. tea. Yes, I was sent around the corner, which yep. was lovely. <laughs> um, I what do I do? I I vocalize in my car, my mobile office, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. So if I'm on my way to teach choir or if I'm on my way to do something, you know, something, I vocalize in my choir. And I have a bunch of sort of vocal warm up CDs and things that yeah. I've bought over the years that I like. Some of them I like, some of them I hate. But I might stick it into the CD player. And you know, and I still don't download music onto my phone or an iPod and plug right, it into right. my car. I'm a CD person, so even when I'm doing work for my choir, I'm like creating playlists on my computer <laughs> and burning them to CDs <laughs> and sticking my CDs in my little CD player. I'm like, okay, CD number one. Um, but yeah, so I do a lot of vocalizing in my car. I've also, uh, you know, finally after years of not doing it, when I teach, I use a microphone mm -hmm. um, so that I don't wear myself into the ground. That's a good idea, yeah. right there. Um, and I really, that's really changed the way I, you know, just my stamina is mm -hmm. to be able to teach with amplification. I just came from a big gig that I did in Pennsylvania where I taught more hours in one day than I've yeah. ever done in my life. Wow. And I, the, well, that was the one thing I said on the phone. I need mics in every location. So. There you go. Yeah. That's very smart. Do you ever lose your voice? I, I, I do. You do? I and mean, not so much anymore. Yeah, when yeah. I was younger, I, it used to happen much more frequently. Do you have like a little... Maggie remedy that works to, God, to I relieve. Wish I could say that I did shutting up. Shutting up. There you go. Very That's effective. the magic potion. Stop. Stop. It works every time. Yeah. Shut <laughs> your mouth. Shut, Shut the your head. mouth. Don't answer the phone. Stop <laughs> yelling. Stop crying. Don't whisper. Stop it. Don't whisper. Whisper is very bad. <laughs> Don't whisper. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I've tried things. I know. You know. I, I remember. I was once at an event, and we were supposed to get up and sing and perform, and I had lost my voice. And this woman came over to me, and she said try this, it's fantastic. And it was like, you know, one of those things. Snapple. Hurricane, tornado, <laughs> vocal, oh. or hurricane, I don't remember, it was many years ago. Anyway, it was in a dropper. I dropped that crap in my mouth. I was like, oh, you know, really? Fire. It, fire. Oh, fire. It was, it was like and oh, garlic oh, and vinegar and just the worst, nasty. Well, you forgot about your yeah. laryngitis. I did, yeah. I did. Yeah. I got my wow. It's much simpler to just yes. hush. True. 
tell you a story about losing and finding the voice. So it was about 20 years ago. I was teach. I used to teach these vocal workshops before I started the choir. Once a month, I would in this art gallery. My husband's a visual artist, and mm. his gallerist used to loan me her gallery on Sundays. So once a month, I would do a big Sunday, and people would come in, and I would just teach the music that I teach a cappella. And that was before cell phones and email and all the rest. So it took you know 120 phone calls to get people into the space, and then yeah. I would mm -hmm. rent chairs and all that. So I, I was doing some body work with this crazy dude who was like passing through town with no material possessions on his way to <laughs> taking his trailer <laughs> across the Mexican border to uh -huh. heal the people. Yeah. And uh, he did some kind of crazy business on, on me, and I and I and, and like he hit the, the the grief spot at the bottom of my foot or something like that, and I sobbed. Anyway, I woke up the next day, no, no, no voice, and I mean oh. none. And I had eighty people coming to this event and I had no way of reaching them because you know you couldn't so I was I called him up and I'm like I don't know what you did but you need to undo it because yeah, my I have to teach. I, need my grief back. I have a three I need my grief give me back my, <laughs> grief. my grief I have a three-hour workshop I have to teach and so he met me at the art gallery this dude was heavy he met me we went into the back room. I don't quite remember oh what God. happened, but I do remember there was like some singing in my mouth, some humming, some singing, some stuff he did over me. I sang in his mouth, he sang in my mouth. We weren't touching, let me establish that. Okay, okay good. Yes. We were not touching. But there was a lot of woo woo stuff that went on there. Yeah. And at the very end, he stood me up and he said, Okay, so now close your eyes, unzip, imagine that you're unzipping your, yourself. You know, and step out and let the, your spirit self, let the highest thing that you are, step out into this experience, into this room. And I stepped out and I sang for three hours. <gasps> I had all I needed. And he sat directly across the room from me. And when he got up and left, bam. Gone. It was gone. Whoa! Just Sharon. Holy Don't totally know where God. he is today. Our camera guy. So just the question out. is, Maggie. <laughs> yes. Is this your best self that we're seeing right now? Oh, yes. Did she? <laughs> I wonder, I heard a zipper noise before she came in. That's trippy, that's man. That's trippy, right? That's really I'll never trippy. forget it. Wow, I mean, that's a moment. Is it, do you know this guy still? Is I don't know where he is around? now. He left. He moved to Australia, and that was the last we wow. heard from him. But he's he was, walking about in Australia, maybe. He is. Barefoot. Interesting. Healing people. Unzipping people. Unzipping people's <laughs> best self. That is crazy. Wow. Um, here's a question for you. You don't hear that every day. Not. Ever, no. actually. Okay, Never heard a story like that. Thank you for sharing. You're wow. Uh, now I'm a little scared. Uh, <laughs> um, Don't so be afraid. So if you were mentoring mm -hmm. um, aspiring actors, camera or voiceover, what are maybe some a few things that you would tell them to, to help them succeed? I would tell them several things. I would say have a full life. First, highest mm. on the list. Have a full life. Have things that you love. Have things that make you happy. Have other things that make you happy because there's nothing like that intense desperation with everything hanging on needing to get the job mm -hmm. to make sure that you don't get the job. Yeah. So for me, at least in my own experience, the best times have been the times when I've had a f when my life has been full enough that when I go into that room, I don't. It's not that I need. It's that I have something to bring and something to offer and something to give, but not that I'm, you know, in desperate that in any way. desperate yeah. state. So that would be the first thing. Fill your life with with things you love. That, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, the second thing would be, I think I spent a lot of y young years in my career thinking that I needed to figure out how to please the people on the other side of the desk mm -hmm. and fit into what they wanted and you know I think that for me the kind of breakthrough moment was when I realized that it wasn't really about that it was about doing what I wanted to do and taking the chance to see whether or not it fit what they wanted mm -hmm. so uh, I think maybe you know it's not it's not about not ple not being a pleaser you know sometimes you have to do a lot of tap dancing and a lot of people pleasing in this industry um, but it's just about I don't know, holding on to who you are, holding on to yourself, and knowing that that in, in and of itself is a gift. Mm -hmm. If you walk into the room and you're in possession of your, your authenticity, you are ahead of the game. Mm. That's a big one right there. 
Amen to that. Okay, show's over. See you okay. later. Um, <laughs> and no, we'll that see you next week. That was amazing. Okay, yeah. I, that was, I yeah. think that's all I got. Yeah, that's She's all right. that one. I mean, I those two, one nuggets drained. right there, man. Right? You can freaking do a seminar on that one right there. Yes. Um, you are so right, though. And so many so people right. are sitting there, and we hear this time and time again, that you, know, you pick up a script, whether it's mm. voiceover or on camera, mm -hmm. and you read what it is that they want, and you're so focused on what they want that you forget who you are yeah. and what you have to offer. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so letting that go and just always bringing you to the table, right? Is yeah. what you're saying. It's tricky. It's, I mean, it's, you wish you could bottle it because there's so many days where you just don't have all the right ingredients to get that mm -hmm. and to get there. But to just to know, okay, that's where I want to be. Right. You know, that's those are the days when it's all working. Is mm -hmm. when I can still, you know. Beautiful. You can feel it though. Mm. Like when you step away from the mic or you step out of the room, you're like, oh. I mean, you can just go, okay. Yeah. That's I it. Did because my you job. just know you yeah. did your very best. Yeah. You were completely and totally yeah. invested. And then it's like mm -hmm. you surrender the rest and go, okay. Absolutely. Now I'm going to go on with my life. Amen, sister. Yeah. Yep. Now, if you, were, if you were starting your career all over again, She's like, wait, like, no, please, my career is not ending. Chuck, can you deliver that news more? more that's, like, that's like what happened to me in December when all my points at Sephora disappeared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they can't explain why. So oh, pretend okay. that everything disappeared and you were starting all over again. You were 20 years old all over again or 16 or however you were. We yeah. just got your big giant things there. Lucky you, no, I'm just all right. um, Would you do anything different? Are there any things that you would do different or maybe... Oh, that's the question. That's if I the were question. starting over, would I do something differently? Yeah. I mean, not from a place of regret, but yeah. just knowing what you know now. Yeah, we don't talk about regrets yeah. on this show. Um, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't have any regrets. Uh, but I, 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 if there were any way that I could have come to what I just expressed earlier in my life, mm. I don't know if you can when mm. you're young and in your twenties. It's a pretty, yeah. it's a pretty rough one. It is. Um, sure, I would have. I would have loved to have that wisdom a little sooner. Mm -hmm. um, because I do think that I spent a lot of those young years trying to fit, trying to fit, trying to fit. And, you know, I, and ultimately it's my uniqueness that has garnered me employment, not right. the way I fit. Um, so I, I, I wish I had known that a little bit earlier. But in terms of how, you know, I, I think it's always, it's, it's such a serendipitous career choice. You know, it's all about who you hang out with, who you're friends with, who you had coffee with, who, you know, when you're when you're 18, and then all of a sudden when you're 22, that guy's directing a play, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden somebody you meet at the play ends up being a screenwriter later on. You know, it's all about yep. that. So, I mean, that's all my, my career has ever been, is just kind of saying yes to the little signposts and trying yep. this and doing that, and then eventually going, oh, look, look what just happened. Look at all yeah. those elements just mm -hmm. came together. Were you always a big uh, like networker? Like you'd go to a lot of events or parties? No, and I'm no? shy. So, so <laughs> how did you meet all these screenwriters and producers? If, that I, did, I you, didn't. Huh? Well, how many how many movies have you seen me in? <laughs> <going, right? laughs> you know what? It's not a. I never did. You Google them and then you went to a party. Right. Say, like, hey, I know. I was stalking you on Google. <laughs> That's right. I, what I did was I hired a private investigator yes. to find out where you were going to be, and then I went. No. That's a good one. <laughs> That's how you do it. Well, that concludes part one with the fabulous. Maggie Wheeler. We will be back next week with part two. You don't want to miss it, so keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next week, you guys, and just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.